Hello and welcome to my poster presentation on fear. What are you so afraid of and where does this fear come from? The term emotion refers to a state of the brain that is associated with signs of reward or punishment. Therefore, emotions are able to regulate behaviour based on this information from the environment. Either rewards triggering an approach behaviour or punishment triggering an avoid behaviour. Most behaviour is determined by a variety of social, cognitive and emotional factors that mediate the influence of environmental factors. This interactive process is present in all aspects of behaviour and emphasises the importance of emotions. Emotions are more than just the outward expression of feelings. It also encompasses other components including cognition and actions. To understand more about how individuals experience emotions, we must also look at the underlying physiological and psychological processes. Emotions are considered primary factors influencing behaviours and cognition as they provide information about the environment and incentive for actions and can regulate decision making based on the information. Fear refers to the emotion that is elicited by a potentially dangerous stimuli or environment. It provides a warning system and triggers a need for action. The experience of a frightful situation is characterised by high arousal and aversiveness and serves an important function in approach and avoidance behaviour tendencies in different situations. Fear is the primary emotion that ensures the survival of the individual and in terms of regulating behaviours and in providing information about the environment, fear alerts individuals to danger and is vital for survival. The purpose and the mechanism of fear is the centre of many theories of human development. Underlying processes operate to regulate behaviours that lead individuals to avoid dangerous situations. These processes include the behavioural inhibition system, the behavioural approach system and the fight flies, flight freeze system. Anger and fear have been considered two sides of the same coin such that when an individual's reaction to a situation could go in two directions. When they find themselves in a situation where they are being threatened, they may choose to either respond with anger and attack or with fear and avoidance. Anxiety is another emotional state that has been found to operate parallel to fear. The autonomic nervous system. Fear is not simply an outward expression. Internally, there are a number of different processes occurring at the same time. Emotional experiences result from an ongoing interactive experience of internal and external environments and it is necessary to understand the events leading up to it just as much as the peak of the emotional expression. The autonomic nervous system controls the heart, intestines and other organs and is aroused in emotional situations. Different levels of arousal affect negative emotions such as sadness, disgust and fear which have been shown to produce different physiological activations such as sweating and rapid breathing. As Collat discusses, the autonomic nervous system is made up of two parts that receive and send information to the heart, intestines and other organs. The first is the sympathetic nervous system, which prepares the body for rigorous activity, such as an increased heart rate. And the second is the parasympathetic nervous system, which prepares the body for non-emergency response by facilitating a vegetative state. How is fear expressed? The physiological expression of fear includes facial expression, sweating, trembling hands and increased heart rate. Each emotion is related to a different level of arousal in the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system such that some processes are decreased and others are increased. For example, the fight or flight response means that the sympathetic nervous system prepares for rigorous activity by increasing the heart rate and respiration and inhibits activity in the parasympathetic nervous system, such as digestion, as this is not useful in this situation. The three components of fear include cognition, such as this is a frightful situation, the feelings, I feel afraid, and actions, to leave or confront the situation. The reinforcement sensitivity theory is based on a functional analysis of behaviour and discusses three operating systems that regulate. The behavioural approach system motivates approach behaviour in response to repetitive stimuli. The behavioural inhibition system mediates anxiety and aims to resolve all conflicts including approach and avoidance by increasing attention and arousal. The third system is the fight, flight or freeze system 
which mediates fear and is activated by threatening stimuli. The primary responsibility of the FFFS system is to motivate avoidance and escape behaviours, and it is posited to be the neural substrate of the emotion of fear. While the three behaviours of fight, flight or, and freeze are physically different and governed by different regions of the brain, together they make up a single system serving the underlying function to avoid danger. The James Lang Theory Whilst the common sense theory of emotional experience is that an individual experiences the feeling of fear, then causes the physiological changes such as increased heart rate, and then physical actions such as running away, there is a contrasting view, which is the James Lang theory. This posits that the autonomic arousal and skeletal actions come before the feeling of an emotion. Research has shown that individuals attribute, attribution of their body's actions contributes to the emotional experience, highlighting the need for physiological arousal to experience emotions. James and Lang agreed that if physiological arousal were removed, there would be no emotional experiencing. Therefore, this theory suggests that people with weak autonomic or skeletal responses will not have the same emotional experience and replicating or enhancing the physiological responses should increase the experience of an emotion. The James Lang theory is outlined by this diagram such that an event such as seeing a large spider will lead to the cognitive appraisal that this is a frightful situation and action including trembling, shaking, sweating, increased heart rate or running away and then the feeling, I feel afraid. Fear and the amygdala. The section of the brain that is considered the most significant for the emotional experience is the amygdala, which is essential for learning fear and the expression of it. Located in the limbic system, the amygdala has been long understood in its role responding to fearful stimuli, including photos that arouse fear and photos of others with fearful expressions. The central amygdala in particular has been revealed to have a significant role in fear conditioning. Activation of neurons in this area of the brain has been found to be necessary for fear memory recall and sufficient to initiate fear responses. Both experiences and genetics have been found to modify activity in the amygdala, which influences an individual's regulation of anxiety and fear. So what's the point of fear? Understanding the basis and effects of emotions, particularly fears, can have greater implications for an individual's life. Fear, just like any other emotion, serves the function of guiding behaviour, in particular guiding behaviour away from dangerous stimuli and events. Therefore, it is very important for survival. It is often experienced parallel to other emotions such as anxiety and anger. The emotional experience of fear does not only encompass the outward reaction of feeling, it also includes the physiological processes leading up to the event. The James Lang theory provides insight into the order that emotions are experienced. Contrary to the common sense notion that they are experienced and then acted upon, the James Lang theory explains emotions as occurring after one has cognitively appraised a situation. The most important consideration about all emotions, and particularly fear, is that it is a multi-dimensional experience and plays a significant role in behaviour and decision making.